It all started probably about five years ago now. Up until that time, so for 40 odd years, Yaya's had been selling various versions of this little booklet. Um, first written in 1971. Um, and since then, um, must be something about me, this happened at did it happen to Tempest Dance? Well, yes, Come on. Have I froze it somehow? Right. So, the first version of the booklet was in May. 1971, um, and it ran to six editions, um, the last edition being March 1991, so we're still talking 30 years ago. Um, then the updates, I've only bit myself got a couple of copies, I've got a copy of edition five uh, and a copy of the 2002 reprint. The updating between 2000 uh, and then between uh, 1985 and 2002, to be perfectly honest with you, it's quite negligible. I don't really know how we had the nerve to sell it. It was so far out of date, the little adjustments. Um, and then at least we didn't have the nerve to call it a new edition in July 2002. We just called it a reprint. But nonetheless, it, uh, it sold out. But it wasn't until about 2015 when we finally sold the last edition. And somebody said, well, it's always been a good seller. We, uh, we need to carry on. But I've been thinking about it, thought about it. We decided we really had to do a proper job. So much has happened between 1971 and 2015 that it really called for a complete new rewrite. So that's what we set out to do. The original booklet, the 1971 version, was uh, written primarily, and I use written in a wide sense as I do the latest book, because nothing is new under the sun. So it's basically gathering a lot of sources together uh, and producing a publication which we hoped were useful for people. So Herman Ran um, wrote the original, or pulled together the original 1971 guide. Uh, he was perhaps the biggest Whig in Roman York at the time. He joined the Royal Commission of Ancient Monuments in York in 1948. He joined York Philo Yorkshire Philosophical Society in the 50s, and he became life president from 1969. He actually, I found him, First Yaya's report of which he appears as a Yaya's member is in 1953. Um, and he received an OBE in 1972. Whether that was a result of writing our booklet in 1971, I rather doubt it. Um, but he's been involved or has had been involved in some of the most important publications related to Roman York, including Roman York, uh, Eber Arkham, I think it's volume two of the Royal Commission, sir. One, one, one. Volume one. Yeah. It's right. I, I, I joined when it's just coming out of the book. <laughs> and if anybody wants to buy an edition of that book, we do have, I think we've still got it, a, a second hand copy um, over on the bookshelf there. And it was also instrumental in writing the book about. Roman York, which is in the Victoria County History uh, series. Uh, he died in 1991 and he's buried in Fulford Cemetery. But having a look at the cover of the one I've got, another instantly recognizable figure arrives to a lot of you there, I'm sure. So the Roman soldier on the front cover of Roman York from AD 71, this is the fifth edition, I think, um, was our. Sadly, the late Richard Hall. 
Um, first time I've ever seen him dressed up like that and knew Richard for a long while, but uh, this is a bit of a departure for him, I think. Um, I then found out that, you, uh, that Richard joined Yacht in 1974, if you trust Wikipedia, so it can't have been him on the cover of the 1971. And that's the first I knew that the cover had changed. So I got on the search for earlier editions. And this is the best I could come up with. I'm not sure which edition, but uh, so very similar cover, just a different Roman. Um, and if you're really desperate to have an original one, um, not as comprehensive as the latest one, um, you can find it on eBay. And the price a couple of days ago was 9.95. But then I came across an even earlier Yaya's leaflet. And this one was first published in 1968. Um, but it's only two or three pages. It's a little fold out leaflet, but it's designed to give the casual visitor um, a quick insight into what you could see in Roman York. So it was a Yaya's publication. Uh, we were doing publications as long ago as 1968. So, as I say, it's just a couple of pages fold out. But I did find that tucked away inside this little leaflet is actually an advert for the handbook that we've all been looking at, Roman York. Um, the interesting thing about that one um, that says it was revised in 1978, fair enough. Um, and confusingly, along the bottom, it says price 80p, post free a pound. So <laughs> quite how that works, I'm not, not sure, but uh, yeah. When in the latter days, we still had a little bit of stock, um, we, we made an effort the people that did it, I'm grateful to them, but um, to try and bring it a little bit up to date so it wasn't quite as bad as how old the publication was getting. So what we did is we got a, a Yaya's members, uh, got a little slip of paper, worked out everything that need, didn't apply. It was mainly things that had closed down or changed and no longer had access to them but we stuck this little slip. So the latest revision before this new one in July 2004 was this little slip of paper. Um, quite interesting to see what we had to do. Um, page two implied that the Roman sewer was open to the public. Well, I can't remember when it was last open to the public many, many years ago. So that was clearly out of date. Um, the Yorkshire Museum Roman galleries have recently been refitted. I think they've been refitted again since then. Gray's Court is now a hotel. Don't get me started on what I think of the fact that Gray's Court is now a hotel. I'm getting into trouble. Um, and the further reading, I only added one book, which was Roman York by Patrick Ottaway in 2011. So that was the last attempt at, at doing a rewrite or a, um, an amendment or a bring up to date. So, we decided it needed something a bit more than that. Um, and here I think is the place to acknowledge that this is not all my own work by any means at all. Um, Co-written, co as I said, written is probably not the right word, but um, put together by Paul Crystal and myself. Um, and Paul is the publication expert. He's, he's written over a hundred books mostly about York and Yorkshire, and um, it's very good on medical books, which is his, his background. So the first acknowledgement is to Paul, who unfortunately can't be here tonight, but I must acknowledge all the people that have helped, contributed, aid Paul and I. We could not have done it anywhere near like it is without lots and lots of cooperation. Um, so many, in fact, that the acknowledgement page on the book is actually two pages. It's, uh, it's so long and we are ever so grateful and thankful for all those people who very, very willingly provided us with a lot of help. So the book is in two parts mainly. And what follows on from the first part um, is 
it's not identical. It is a very much updated version of the earlier book with a, a, a guide yourself walk round uh, Rome and York, um, starting outside the Minster. Um, so I'm very lucky that, that my son is in the graphics business computer graphics, which didn't exist when the first booklet was done. So he's re he revised this plan for us and gave us something to build on. So the starting point for the walk is outside York Minster's south door. We thought we'd make it simple. No, we didn't. That's where the original walk started from. Um, and it's something, of course, that everybody could find, but they wouldn't have been able to find in 1971 uh, the statue of Constantine, that's much more recent. And we decided that that would make quite a decent cover for the book. Um, and then shortly before we actually got the publication, you probably, if you know your bookshelves, there is another book on Roman York with an almost identical cover. But we didn't know that at the time. So the book is full, or the first part of the book, which is the walk, is, is full of illustrations um, for you to check where you are so you can't go wrong. It's easy to find your way um, around this walk, which we say takes about an hour, um, but it takes a lot longer if you start stopping off at some of the recommended stopping off points. Things have changed since the original walk, though. Many things have changed. Um, for instance, we no longer have uh, ground level access to the old walk tower. Um, this is an illustration from the original book, um, the original booklet, um, and we've replaced it with this one. Don't know how I managed to get that on the slide. <laughs> um, so I went around uh, taking loads and loads of photographs to have um, updated photographs included in the, uh, in the new walk round. And also, since the original booklet in 1971, much better information is available as you walk around. There were only sparse indications, um, some very old plaques, etc. And now we've got uh, uh, the ones put up by the City Council, some of them by the Civic Trust. I have to admit, this one amuses me. This one is in the pavements, and there are quite a few in the pavement, but this one's in the wall pavement um, to the back of the Minster. Uh, near Grey's Court Hotel. Um, I'm with the voluntary guides um, and a number of times I've had to explain to people who I've taken along that stretch who stopped to look around and see the gateway uh, of the Roman <laughs> fortress where this plaque is. And of course there's absolutely nothing to see, not a thing. So it bemuses people sometimes, but it tells you where the position was anyway. And it also, with having these nice up-to-date colour photographs, although nothing stays up-to-date because we've now got a sort of roof on the Anglian Tower, but it, it does mean that people following the route can't get lost, really. Uh, they know their way around um, and can follow the photographs um, and know that they're in the right places uh, because some of them you might not um, fall on easily unless you know what you're doing. It's surprising just how few visitors know the existence of, of the Anglian Tower and the, the bank levels, etc. In fact, many locals don't even know it exists. But uh, So hopefully, if they have the book, uh, that will help them find some of the unusual out-of-the-way places. And then we uh, have earmarked the places where you can go in and find a lot more uh, information, a lot more to see for Roman York. And at this point, I must acknowledge Graham here, who is sat in the audience, who gave me permission to go in the Roman baths and take photographs. I also got permission to go into the uh, Yorkshire Museum and take photographs. They were very cooperative. After, so that's the walk round. Um, and we go into the book then which has a brief introduction, um, not so brief in the new version, um, of Roman Britain itself, um, with a lot of background information uh, on the Roman Empire and the uh, presence of the Romans uh, in Yorkshire. 
Uh, we also have a section on um, the, the many, many excavations and digs that have taken place since 1971. And really one of the things that was lacking in the previous reprints and revised editions were they just didn't pick up um, most of the excavations with, uh, with Roman implications. So there's a whole section, in fact, there's more than a section of dig information, excavation information and finds between 1971 and right up to 2022. Um, the actual publication was ready, sat at the publishers before the dreaded pandemic. Um, but unfortunately, it, as I say, it was sat there ready to go, but uh, didn't get released because of the pandemic. Um, and then when the pandemic was over, we had another book with the same publisher and they didn't want to publish two about York, although they are very different, um, in the same year. So it waited another year. So that meant that before it even left the publishers, uh, it was three years out of date. So Paul mainly uh, grabbed hold of it and the master and got it back from the publishers um, and updated it from 2019 um, to 2022, including all the latest information that we could get hold of and were aware of, including quite wonderfully um, the, the Rydale Horde, which uh, is now there to see uh, in the Yorkshire Museum. But we do some of the details, um, some of the digs in more detail. I'm sorry, I couldn't resist uh, putting this one in because that's probably the most significant um, uh, dig over the past 30, 40 years. Uh, I don't know who any of these people are, of course. Um, <laughs> so quite quite a few, and uh, the the more status the dig, shall I use those words, uh, then we give it a little bit of an airing um, and uh, give it a bit of uh, information about that because it's so interesting uh, and such an impact. <laughs> I'm sorry. A new way to spell courtesy. Oh yeah, courtesy. Yeah. <laughs> No, she's, she's that. <laughs> yeah. So then we come on to sections of um, the book, um, places to visit, the key places to visit. Um, so as I said earlier, I, I went to the auction museum, I said, well, showed them the original book, said we're updating this book, uh, we'd like to give lots of coverage to the auction museum. Um, can I come in and take some photographs? Yes, yes, of course you can. Which surprised me, actually. Um, they were very encouraging. Yes, you can come in, take some photographs, take anything you want. Um, so I did. Um, and then I showed, showed them to them. Um, I was slightly disappointed because they said, oh, no, we, we can do better than that. We have got stock photographs taken in much better conditions um, than you walking around with your little camera, we will let you have them. Uh, we will let you have the information about any of the ones that you're interested in. <clears throat> so the Yorkshire Museum, bless them, um, gave us permission to use their stock photographs. Um, and so we did. That's not something we're going to turn down. Including, because Paul and I were allowed to choose, in fact, including my favourite of all times. I remember as a schoolboy going into the hospitium and being impressed by the Roman ladies' hair. Um, still one of my favourite exhibits in there. Um, so we've got a very good section. Thank you to the Auction Museum. And subsequently to that, I'm pleased to say that the Auction Museum have agreed, and I've already done indeed, um, stock the latest book in their shop, which I'm really pleased about. As well as the Yorkshire Museum, um, I went along to the Baths Museum, um, met Graham for the first time, 
told him exactly the same thing, met with the same level of cooperation. Graham was more than happy for us to have uh, a look around, for me to take <laughs> some photographs and for us to uh, feature it um, in his book, in our book. So um, thank you very much, Graham. You sat there. I am very, very grateful. I hope you think they turned out all right. Um, and then the Graham then led us on to something else. We were already, a fledgling idea was the annual Roman festival. Don't want them to be outdone by the Vikings. So um, Graham uh, helped to get us in touch with uh, Legio Six Victus, which is a reenactment group. And I know that some Yorkshire, some Yaya's members are also part of the group. Um, so I got in touch with them. Again, fantastic cooperation. Um, and they uh, sub subjected the agreement of um, Charlotte Graham Photography, who had officially taken quite a few photographs uh, of the Legion um, beforehand. So they had a, a stock um, and uh, Legio 6 were more than happy for us to use them. And Charlotte Graham was more than happy to use them for us to use them. So again, acknowledgements to, to Charlotte and the Legion. And you can tell the amount of support that we've had on the project from them, with the fact that Marcus here is uh, uh, here tonight, and I'm grateful to him for coming. Uh, and I'm pleased that uh, we've got such wonderful photographs. And they're a nice hark back, although they're not on the cover. Um, and to be brutally honest with you, if it had been up to me, I had to put these on the cover, which was a, a bigger tie back to the original one. Um, but uh, the publishers had the last say. And unfortunately, they made a mistake by picking one that was close to another uh, recent publication. So thank you for the help there. Um, <clears throat> and in return, I'll put an advert in for you. Um, in fact, Marcus is not going to let you leave until you sign up. <laughs> so. Uh, Beware. So as well as having the places we can visit, there are a few items that are not included in the original booklet, but it's so much more comprehensive. And there's a few appendices um, and extras. So there's a list of the Roman emperors. There is a list of governors of Britain. There's a schedule of York's medieval churches where you're gonna find bits of Roman masonry built into them. So that's a good game in itself. You can do a different tour of York, going around finding the bits of Roman masonry in the various churches. There's a timeline for Roman York. There's a whole section on the various hordes um, that have been found in around York. For those who are technically, well, not technically minded, but interested, there's uh, some Latin terms. Um, there is also a list of all the websites that we've used um, to glean information and where you can find loads and loads of other information, obviously, about Roman York. And then the further reading list, we have updated. I say we need to be honest, Paul updated it. In the 1971 edition, there are seven items listed as further reading. In the making of Roman York 2022, there are just short of 200 publications that you can read about Roman York. Why we want to enter a field as big as that, I don't know. No, we do. We want to keep Yaya's in there. Uh, so there's over two, nearly 200 publications and 24 websites where you can find more information. And that is it, really. As I said, it was just an unashamedly a plug. Please do socialise, enjoy the rest of your evening um, and buy a book or two. Does anyone have any questions? Because let's face it, the amount of knowledge in this room about Roman York, there'll be plenty of answers. I have a curveball that I found in the newspaper archive research. We're well aware of the Deo Serapis stone that was found on Toft Green originally in the 1770s. It was found again in Mint Yard in the creation of St. Leonard's Place. 
And we cannot find, it is the same stone, we cannot find out how it came to end up moving from somewhere like Sheriff Hutton, where somebody had collected it after the original find, and ending up in somebody's yard, in Mint Yard, being discovered again. And that one's still yet to be resolved. There's only one Deo Serapis stone, as far as we know, and it's one of those mysterious things. And the newspaper research has also been useful with the Roman bath, because I found a photograph, did I not, Kurt, in the Yorkshire Post, showing mid-dig. So you're looking down at a very well-propped trench, open to the sky, and Kurt informs me that the dark shadow on the right of the image, it's a newsprint image, is the rest of the pub. So they were digging alongside the sort of 40 foot wall of the pub itself, open to the air. You won't be allowed to do that now, but 1929, 30. And it's the photo that hasn't been circulated before. So we're still finding more. So when you say all oh, the sources, there's still more to know. Believe it or not, York, York Yards, which existed then, um, produced a booklet of the findings that after, straight after the Roman baths was discovered and dug out. Mm. And I think, hopefully, the, the copy is, I'm looking at Anna, but I, I think the copy is in the archives. Yeah. I, I dug it out and discovered it somewhere, and I'm sure I've handed it over. Um, so you, you've got yeah. a copy, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> Anyone else, any burning questions? So okay. let's just mingle. Sorry, Graham. Yeah. The say consumed those who can't hear. Um, someone's asked on the chat online, where do all the skeletons go that were found with the sarcophagi in places like the museum gardens? Where do the skeletons go? Well, I think Kurt will tell us, but yeah. I think they're all in the Yorkshire Museum's stores. Uh, stores yeah. they? Okay. Yeah, the railway station. Yeah. 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 Yes. The Driffield Terrace dig was a bombshell. I mean, it got to national news, didn't it? And we know because on one of our previous Zoom lectures, um, one of our customers on Zoom was in a hotel room in Edinburgh and he saw Kurt and he said, Aren't you that man off the telly? <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it was still, still yet more to be found. Um, I'm always asking, Where was the amphitheatre? And there are as many answers as, as, as David Brinkley or Ralph Cheekley. Which one? You know, there were two, don't you? <laughs> oh, no. You know, and, and, and see, that, that one will run and run. We may never know. And that's the beauty of it. Because it's now so far away from our present age that, you know, things decay. Uh, and it's interesting, the original write-up in Yorkshire Archaeological Journal for that tower behind the library because Herman Ram added a footnote to Geoffrey Radley's work saying, well, of course, it's post-Roman, it's late Roman, it may not be Anglo-Saxon. And I do like that. You know? We do say that. <laughs> yes, two archaeologists, three opinions. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, I'm aware. If you have to excuse me repeating people's questions, it's just that those on Zoom are only relying on this microphone on this computer. So when people ask a question, I'll repeat the question for the benefit of the computer. Right, any more, Greg? That's it. So, yes, we'll meet again. Sorry, go ahead. Ah, the, the survey by Cambridge uh, that was going around, that was going around in June, wasn't it? Have we heard anything about that? No? GPR survey around the city. Yeah, as Kurt has replied to, to that question about any more being heard about the GPR survey by, I think it was at Cambridge, wasn't it, going around York in the summer. 
There may be more about that in the York Archaeological Forum conference in November, hopefully, because it's tantalizing. If you're driving in a vehicle with GPR around the city, you're going to find something in Tempest. Yeah, just to confirm that Andrew Woods is going to do a talk about the Roman hoard here on the 8th of February. Next yes, year. we have a, a talk by Andrew Wood, of the, um, he's a numismatist from the Yorkshire Museum, on the Roman hoard in this building next February, another Roman hoard. They still keep finding them. And of course, they usually have an older coin at the bottom of the hoard, at the bottom of the pit, don't they? So that's another question to resolve. Which Roman hoard is it? Well, yes, I mean, we've had a, we've had a talk by Andrew before, so I assume it's another hoard, because so I'm sure... Yeah, the Rydale Hoard, yeah. Uh, right, yeah. Uh, did the Rydale Hoard have any coins in it? An audience is it? Yes, I assume it did. So that's that's the subject of the February lecture here. Yes. Um, any other burning questions? What I should have said is if you buy the book today, it is 10% 10, 10 cheaper than if you were to... Uh, buy it from Amazon or uh, in the bookshops or whatever. So don't miss your chance. Right, everyone. So by all means, let's mingle and look at the bookstall and uh, chit chat. We don't normally get much of a chance to do that at our meetings. So thank you, everyone, for coming. Good night. Yeah.